राम राम हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. नेताय गोर हरि बो हरि बो हरि बो नेताय गोर हरि बो जय जय प्रभु पाद प्रभु पाद प्रभु पाद जय श्रील प्रभु पाद गोर प्रेम मनंदे हरिबो नमः ओम विष्णु पदाया कृष्णा प्रेष्टाया बुद्धले श्रीमाती भक्ति वेदांता स्वामी नीति नामने नमस्ते सरस्वती देवी गौरवानी प्रचारिने निर्विशेष सुन्यवादी पश्चात्य देशतारिने ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाया Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So on this suspicious day of the appearance of Lord Nishringadev, we will try to speak something of the glories of Lord Nishringadev. Lord Nishringadev, of course his pastimes are described in the seventh canto, mainly in the seventh canto we have the appearance of Lord Nishringadev and we hear about how Lord Nishringadev comes to protect his devotee Prahlad Maharaj. But prior to the appearance of Lord Nishringadev, we hear about Prahlad Maharaj. And it was Prahlad Maharaj who Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was very fond of hearing about. Both Dhruva Maharaj and Prahlad Maharaj, Lord Chaitanya would regularly hear the pastimes from Srimad Bhagavatam, usually from the mouth of Gadarhar Pandit. Lord Chaitanya would go to temple of Tota Gopinath and Gadahar Pandit would be there and he would recite for the pleasure of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So hearing about Prahlad Maharaj, uh, we want to understand the glories of his devotion for the Lord. Prahlad Maharaj, of course, was born in the womb 
of the wife of Haranyakashipu. And Haranyakashipu wanted his son to get education. Just like modern people today, they're very anxious to have their children educated. You know, people in India, they want to send their children maybe to Europe or to even America or Australia to get their education. We see so many of the wealthier people in India, they like to send their children overseas for education. It's true. It's, it's true in many countries of the world. I know in China also, in China people also send their children overseas for education. Sounds like Bhakti Purushottam Swami moved outside, huh? Okay. Maybe I would be better in the temple room. <laughs> he was supposed to be in the temple room. I can't hear what you're saying, Prabhu. Huh? You can hear me okay? Okay, it's just not ideal. You know, I'm, I'm speaking against him. You can hear, but I have to speak against him. Uh, anyway, we're talking about education. Haranyakashipu wanted his son to get good education. And Haranyakashipu, he's a... Yeah, uh, the king of the demons. He wants him to get educated as a good demon. Just like people today. They want their children to be educated as good materialists. They're materialistic. They want their children also to be materialistic. So, Haranyakashipu sent his son to the Gurukula to get education. And after his son had been there in the Gurukula, of course, in the Gurukula, the, the two sons of Sukracharya were the teachers and they were teaching Prahlad Maharaj what he didn't want to know. They were teaching him the, about politics, how to deal with your enemy. But Prahlad Maharaj, we were hearing just now, if you heard Jai Pataka Swami Maharaj's class, that Prahlad Maharaj had no enemy. He didn't see anyone as friend or enemy. He saw everyone the same. Jaipataka Swami quoted the verse from Kapila Shiksha, Titikshava Karunika Suridam Sarvadehinam Ajata Shatrava Shantu Sadava Sadubushanaha. Right? The qualities of the devotee. They're tolerant, they're merciful, they're friendly to everyone. They don't make distinctions between friends and enemies. They see everyone the same. But the Guru Kula, for the demons, they were teaching how to deal with the enemy. Right? How you deal with them. First of all, you give them the instruction. You give them the order. If they don't follow, then you try to bribe them. You give them a little inducement. Listen, if you do what I say, I'll give you, you know, mm, you know, politics, it's, it's politics. Uh, and then if you don't, if they still don't agree, then maybe you have to put them in jail. Some politicians do that. Uh, there, there's some countries, if you're the enemy of the political party, they'll feed you to hungry dogs. They keep some hungry dogs, and those people who are the enemy, they just feed them to the hungry dogs. You become food for hungry dogs. 
Not a very pleasant way to die, is it? Anyway, this is politics. This is what they do. They, they're so desperate for power. Haranyakashipu wanted his son to follow in his footsteps. Haranyakashipu is the emblem, he's a personification of material desires. Material desires. Everyone, we have desires. We are trying to purify our desires. Haranyakashipu, he's not interested in purifying his desires. He wants to satisfy his desires for everything illicit and everything which can satisfy his senses. That's what he wants. So Har Prahlad Maharaj was in the Guru Kula to get this kind of education. And after being in the Guru Kula, he came to visit his father, and his father wanted to know, what was the best thing you learned from your teachers? And Prahlad Maharaj narrates to his father that I have learned from my teachers. The best thing is that if, if I am in the conception of I and mine, if I am thinking I am the body and this is mine, if I am in the bodily conception of life, then I am like a person in a blind well, in the bottom of a well. And the best thing I can do is to go to the forest and to live in the forest. In other words, vanaprast. Right? Sometimes we preach to people, you know Prabhu, you're getting a little older now, you should think about vanaprast. And they look at you, you know. <laughs> they don't much appreciate it. You know, they're not really thinking about it. Although so many gray hairs are there. We see the gray hairs, maybe even there's no hairs. And we see Time is showing us the influence that our time in this material body is coming to. We should get ready to leave the body. We should really detach from the material world. But we're trying to hang on. We don't want to give up. We want to stay. We want to live longer. Give me a little longer. Right. Prabhupada told, he had the friend, the doctors told him, oh, you're going to die. He said, oh, doctor, please give me four more years. I just need four more years. The doctor said, sorry, I cannot do anything to help you. This is the nature of materialistic people. They're trying to prolong their life. They don't recognize that the life is coming to an end. Haranyakashipu, of course, he wanted the benediction that he would be immortal, that he would never die. And he made, in this way, he made so many uh, conditions in his dealing with Lord Brahma. And Lord Brahma gave him these concessions. But still, he died. And so we learn from Haranyakashipu, many things. If we're willing to learn, we can learn many things from him. So he had asked Prahlad Maharaj, what was the best thing you had learned? Prahlad Maharaj told him about going to the forest. You know, this was not what he wanted to hear. He wanted to hear how to deal with the enemy how to deal with our en the enemies of the demons, the demigods, right? They're always at conflict with each other. There's Devi Sampat and Asuric Sampat, and they're directly opposed to each other. So Haranyakashipu was always anxious to curb the demigods. He'd conquered the demigods. He'd taken control of heaven. He was so powerful, even the demigods were having to serve him. 
So Prahlad Maharaj had not satisfied his father. His father was really upset to hear what Prahlad was explaining to him. So he instructed his teachers, be very careful. Don't let any, of the, uh, the boy, any other people influence the mind of my son. You know, you get that from materialistic parents. Even Mother Sachi, Mother Sachi, she didn't, she didn't like her son going to Advaita Acharya. Vishwarup, the oldest brother of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he was going to hear from Advaita Acharya. And she saw the result that because Vishwarup was going regularly and hearing from Advaita Acharya, eventually when Mother Sachi and Jagannath Mishra decided it was time to arrange the marriage of their son, Vishwarup left. He left home, never to return. And Mother Sachi was really lamenting her oldest son gone away from home. She felt un very un not pleasant. So much so they didn't want Lord Chaitanya to even study anymore. They thought if Lord, if Arni Mai studies, he may follow his older brother. That will be terrible. That if both our sons become sannyasis, it will be terrible. There will be nobody to take care of me. Right? We think like that. We think about it. Oh, Mother Sachi, she's a little different. She's the, the eternal mother of the Lord. Anyway, Haranyakashipu wanted Prahlad to be protected. Don't let anybody influence the thinking of our son. So Prahlad was back in the Gurukula and the teachers were having difficulty to teach Prahlad because the teachers were teaching make distinction friend and enemy demigods and demons but Prahlad could not think like that Prahlad could only think everyone's equal see everyone the same see Krishna in the heart of everyone spirit souls so Sanda and Namarka the two sons of Sukracharya they came to Haranyakashipu to complain about Prahlad that this son of yours he is not taking our education so Haranyakashipu calls for Prahlad and he asked Prahlad, what is going on? What have you learned from your teachers? And Prahlad Maharaj said this time, I have learned that hearing, chanting, remembering, serving the lotus feet, offering prayers, worshipping, like I have learned that these are the best things, that this is the best education, worshipping Vishnu, and when Haranyi Kashipu heard this, then he flipped. That was, you know, it just, it was unbearable for him to hear how his son was promoting devotional service to Lord Vishnu. Because Haranyi Kashipu was the sworn enemy of Vishnu. Lord Vishnu had killed his brother Haranyaksha. So Haranyakashipu was the sworn enemy. He hated Vishnu. And here is Prahlad, his own son. In, in, and he's advocating devotional service to Lord Vishnu. Serve Lord Vishnu. Hear and chant about Lord Vishnu. That is the best of education. So Haranyakashipu wants to understand where did you get this from Prahlad? Who, who gave you this bhakti? You know, when we have some fault, you know, you have some bad habit or something, they want to know where did you get this from? Who taught you this? 
So Prahlad Maharaj replies to his father that uh, he says that people who are absorbed in the bodily concept of life, people who, are, who have made their vow to stay in the home, the Grihavrat, that, uh, they've, they've made this vow to remain in their family, in the bondage of family life and to serve their uncontrolled senses, they're going to, on the path to hell. And they're simply chewing the chewed. Adanta gobir vishatam tamizram puna punas charvita charvananam. Right? They're chewing what has already been chewed. This is the foolishness of materialistic people. Prahlad Maharaj does not immediately reply to the question of his father. His father wanted to know, where did you get this bhakti from? But Prahlad first of all says to his father that you, you won't get this bhakti. You don't have to worry. You're never going to get bhakti. Because, he, Prahlad Maharaj said, even you try for it by your own endeavor or by instructions of others or by a combination of both, there's no way you're going to become devotee because your senses are uncontrolled and you're so attached to bodily comforts so you're on the path to hell. Hmm? So this was Prahlad's first reply to his father, that without controlling your senses and without giving up all of this sense gratification, there's no way you're going to save yourself from going to hell. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna also says, Bhogaishvarya pratsaktanam taya parita chaitasam vaya vasayatmika buddhi samado na vidyate. Right? Though in the minds of those who are attached to material opulence and sense gratification, the resolute determination for devotional service does not take place. So Prahlad Maharaj tells his father, <laughs> you don't have to worry, you're not going to be affected. And Prahlad then continues, he talks about Natevidu Swa Gatim Hi Vishnu Dura Shaya Yegati Artamanena. He says that those who are in this bodily conception of life, they accept for their leader, for their teacher, they will accept another person who is in the same consciousness, who is also in the bodily concept of life. And in this way, they never achieve the goal of life. They simply, they're like a blind person and if a blind person will take shelter of a blind person, then you cannot expect to get any good result. If a blind person follows another blind person, they will go into the ditch. Prahlad Maharaj is using this example to explain to his father that You've taken shelter of Sukracharya. Sukracharya is the guru of the demons. And the two sons of Sukracharya, they were supposed to be Pilat's teachers. So, Sukra means semen. And Acharya, teach. in other words, he's a teacher by seminal descent not by actual spiritual qualification. 
And if you simply accept a teacher on the basis of that bodily conception of life, you cannot expect a good result. Just like smarter Brahmins. Smarter Brahmins, that means they're, they're born in the Brahmana family. So they will accept another smarter Brahman for their teacher. He should also be born in the Brahmana family. And they claim that the qualification of the teacher is by birth. Now, in Krishna consciousness, it is not like that. Rather, the qualification is Shrotriya, by hearing. You have to hear from the teacher. The materialistic people, they go and they select their guru based on birth. What kind of family are you from? What is your gotra? What is your caste? Like this. But the actual process of selecting the spiritual teacher is you have to hear. You have to hear from the person. Those of you who have attended the ISKCON Disciple Course, you will know there that how do we select the spiritual teacher. Prabhupada explained that we have to hear from that person for one year. And you should, after hearing for one year, then you should be convinced that this person can help me, he can change me, he can save me from materialistic life. So Prahlad Maharaj, by speaking to his father, telling him about, you're like a blind person, he's warning him about just simply selecting the teacher based on simply birth. That is not the correct process. We have to hear and we have to inquire. Tadvidi pranipatena pari prashnena sevaya. Like that. This is how we get spiritual knowledge. You don't make spiritual advancement just simply by considering the material birth. That is not going to help. So then Prahlad Maharaj continues. How, wh where did he actually get this knowledge from? Naishammati, he says, you have to take the dust from the feet of the pure devotee. You take that dust from the feet of that devotee who is niskinchana, who has no material affection. And you take that dust and smear it all over your body. This is how you actually get bhakti. Naishammati stavad rukramangrin sprishati an arta pagamo yat arta. Mahi yasham padarajo vishekam niskinchana nam ya nevriti yavat. Right? We have to get rid of the anartas. We have anartas, we have dirty things in the heart, unwanted things in the heart, and they can be removed by contact with the pure devotees, by those devotees who are actually niskinchana, who have given up any affection for enjoying the material world. We have to the Abhishek, you have to take the, just like we're going to do Abhishek for Lord Nisringadev. We have to bathe our whole mind and body in the dust from the feet of these devotees who are Niskinchana. And in this way, we can actually get Bhakti. Not by any other way. This same point comes out again in the fifth canto where uh, Jadbarat 
was carrying Maharaj Rahugan. And when Maharaj Rahugan complained that Jadbarat was not carrying the palanquin, palanquin properly, and he began to chastise Jadbarat. He said, I'm going to beat you if you don't carry the palanquin properly. And then Jadbarat began to speak spiritual knowledge. And Maharaj Ruhugan was amazed because he thought that Jadbarat was Jad. He thought he was Jada. He thought he was really stupid. He thought he was an imbecile. He didn't know he was actually an enlightened soul. And when Jadbarat began to speak and enlighten Maharaj Rahugan, then Rahugan asked, where did you get this from? Where did you get this bhakti from? Where do we get it from? The only way we get, we have to take the dust from the feet of the great devotees. How do you get that dust? Prabhupada would sometimes say, even Prabhupada would be in the temple. And he would say, nobody should touch my feet. How are you going to get the dust from the feet of the pure devotees? Well, where they walk, you can take that dust. After they walk, there's always that dust there. Take that dust. But actually, Prabhupada would say, rather than just simply touching the feet, bring me my slippers. This was Prabhupada's instruction, how you get the blessings of the pure devotee, by service. Mahat sevam dwaram mahur vimuktes tamo dwaram yoshitam sangi sangam. By serving the Mahatmas, it opens the doors to liberation. We have to serve the devotees, then we will get rid of the anartas from the heart. We know we have anartas in the heart. This anartha nevriti, this is the big, the most demanding of all the process of devotional service, to get rid of these anartas. And the most effective way is by the blessings of the great souls, the blessings of those who've got rid of the anartas. So we take shelter of Srila Prabhupada and Srila Prabhupada's teachings. And in this way, we can properly clean our hearts. An important instruction in relation to the teachings of Lord Nisringadev comes in the fifth canto. Because in the fifth canto, we have prayers offered by the residents of Jambudweep. Those of you who are studying Srimad Bhagavatam, you'll remember in the fifth canto there's descriptions of the universe and we hear about Jambudweep. And in each different section of Jambudweep, there's a different form of the Lord. So it describes that in Harivarsha, Lord Nisringadev resides there. If you go to Jambudweep today and you go to Harivarsha, Lord Nisringadeva is there. And Lord Nisringadeva is worshipped there by all the residents, including Prahlad Maharaj. And they all offer a beautiful prayer to Lord Nisringadeva. A prayer which is very important for all of us. Om Namo Bhagavate Narasimhaya Namas Tejas Tejase Avir Avir Bhava Brajanaka, Brajadamstra, Karmashraya, Randaya, Randaya, Tamo, Grasa, Grasa, Om, Swaha, Abhayam, Abhayam, Atmani, Puvishtam. O my Lord Nisringadev, who possesses nails and teeth like thunderbolts, Kindly vanquish my demonic-like desires for fruit, fruitive activities. Please appear in our heart and drive away our ignorance so that we may become fearless in our struggle for existence in this material world. So this prayer 
is offered to Lord Nishingadev to help us to get rid of our fruit, fruitive desires, our fruitive mentality, the desire to enjoy material world. And that's why we worship Lord Nishingadev. We want to get rid of these material desires. So Prahlad Maharaj and the residents of Harivarsha, they all pray to Lord Nishringadev in this way. Please appear in our heart, drive away our ignorance. Ignorance is the cause of material desires. The root cause of all sin is ignorance. We want to get rid of that ignorance by hearing Srimad Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita, by offering prayers to Lord Nishringadev. Like on this very special day, we pray to Lord Nishringadev. Please appear in our heart so we might become fearless in our struggle for existence in the material world material world everyone is concerned with four things eating sleeping mating and fearing we live in fear we live in fear of course we're fe fear of death we're in fear of old age in fear of disease we live in fear of these things we live in fear that we may lose all of our worldly opulence, all of our possessions, all of the things we're attached to, our family members, our home. We're, we're all in anxiety how to keep these things. We have to pray to Lord Nishringadev to remove all of these obstacles. Generally, people had the custom they would take shelter of Lord Ganesh to remove obstacles. Because we think of Lord Ganesh as destroying the obstacles on the path of devotion. But when we come to Krishna consciousness, we don't so much look to Lord Ganesh to do this. Instead, we take shelter of Lord Nishringadev because it's Lord Nishringadev who can actually destroy the obstacles on the path of spiritual progress. We want to take shelter of Lord Nishringadev. He is Vigna Vinash Narasimha. He destroys the obstacles on the path of devotion. We have to take shelter. So here in Mayapur Dam, it's a very good place to take shelter of Lord Nishringadev. We're so fortunate. We have the deity of Lord Nishringadev here. Lord Nishringadev appeared to protect the devotees. Previously, our temple had been attacked. Some Dakoids had come and they tried to steal the deities from the altar. At that time, we didn't have the big deities. We just had small Radha Madhava. But some Dakoids thought that these deities are gold. And they came to steal the deities. And they even threw bombs. And they blew off the leg of His Holiness Bhakti Raghava Swami. So after that incident, the devotees met together and they thought, that it would be nice if we could also bring Lord Nishringadev here, that he could, we could take shelter of Lord Nishringadev and he will protect the devotees. Because, you know, Mayapur, especially 1970s, early 70s, there were not many people here. It was a remote place. It was like a jungle, not so much people, very quiet, dangerous. So, we thought Lord Nishringadev would certainly help to give shelter for the devotees. So, Lord Nishringadev deity was brought here and we've been worshipping Lord Nishringadev since then. 
Of course, Lord Nishinga Dev is also there over just over the Jalangi, there's a place called Nishringa Pali. And it, it is said that Lord Nishringa Dev came there after he killed Harani Kashipu. He had actually come there and take, he took rest there at that place known as Nishringa Pali. And that's how the deity of Lord Nishringa Dev appeared there that Lord Nishringadev came there, he rested there, and all the demigods, they all followed Lord Nishringadev. They, they're also there. Devapali is there on the other side of the uh, Alakananda, where, which is just there at Nishringapali. So Lord Nishringadev has his connection here in Mayapur, and we know also in the Kali Yuga, Lord Nishringadev also appeared here in Mayapur. He appeared to one person, the Chankazi. <laughs> right? The Chankazi, he got darshan of Lord Nishringadev because he was stopping the Sankirtan and he'd broken the Madanga. So that night when he was resting, Lord Nishringadev appeared on his chest and grabbed him by the throat and, and instructed him very clearly, don't you ever interfere with my devotees. Don't you ever break my Madanga. And Lord Nishringadev gave a little taste of what would be in store if he dared to do ever such activities to harm the devotees, Lord Nishringadev drew his nails across the chest of the Chankazi. And the Chankazi told to Nimai Pandit, because Nimai Pandit can, had come there with the, all the devotees to protest that you cannot stop the Sankirtan. So the Chankazi told Lord Chaitanya how he had a visitor that night, uh, 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 an unexpected visitor, and the Chankazi also showed the marks on his chest to show that Lord Nishringadev meant what he was saying. And so Lord Nishringadev comes here, he appeared here to please to protect his devotees, right? Lord Nishringadev, half lion, half man. The lion is appropriate because Lord Nishringadev is like a lion. The lion is ferocious to anyone, but very gentle to his own cubs. The lion will be very gentle with his own cubs, but any other person comes, the lion is ferocious. So Lord Nishringadev is very gentle with his devotees, but very ferocious with the non-devotees, those who are the enemies or those who are opposing the devotees. And we saw in the Srimad Bhagavatam, it's described after Lord Nishringadev appeared and killed Haranyakashipu, he was in a very angry mood and no one could pacify him and many even Lakshmi his own consort came and she was not able to pacify him and Lord Brahma came he was not able to pacify him and so many different demigods all came they were not able to pacify Lord Nishringadev but it was only when Prahlad came and Prahlad came and offered his obeisances to Haranyakashipu. Then Haranyakashipu was pacified and he was so pleased to see Prahlad. And he put his lotus hand on the head of Prahlad and instilled in his head divine knowledge so that Prahlad could offer prayers. Lord Nishringadev picked up Prahlad and 
and placed Prahlad on his lap. So it said, from that time on, the Lord got the taste for Vatsalyaras. Previously, there was no Vatsalyaras. Before Lord Nishingadev, you've got Kurma, Matsya, Varaha, you know, there's no Vatsalyaras. There's no taste of being the parent. But when he comes as Haranyakashipu, uh, when he comes as Lord Nishringadev to kill Haranyakashipu, he picks up Prahlad and puts him on his lap. And, his hand, and his, he, he's, oh, he's thinking, oh, so nice to have a son, to have a child. Oh, so nice. He got some taste for this kind of rasa. Previously, the Lord never had that taste before. But after Lord Nishringadev, he got that taste to be the father. And so you see in other incarnations, you can see he's enjoying something of this mood. So on this day, we always, when we offer worship to Lord Nishringadev, we first of all offer to Prahlad Maharaj. Usually we would worship Lord Nishingade first and then Prahlad. But on this day, we worship first Prahlad Maharaj and then Lord Nishingade. Because it's Prahlad Maharaj who is the most dear to Lord Nishingade. By pleasing the devotee of the Lord, Lord Nishingade is pleased. So when you're offering your puja to Lord Nishingade, First of all, worship Prahlad and then Lord Nishringadi on this day. This is how we show our respect and our gratitude to the Lord and his pure devotee. All right, are there any questions? Anybody has any questions or comments? Yes, Prabhu? We, how to have that prayerful mood? We don't have the ability to offer prayers so nicely. How to have that prayerful mood? Well, we can offer the prayers which Prahlad offered. You can recite the same prayers of Prahlad. If we ourselves don't feel confident to compose nice prayers, then simply offer pr the prayers of Prahlad. And we can also offer the prayers of Jayadev Goswami, which we regularly sing from the Gita Govinda. We offer, when we worship Lord Nishingadev, you can offer like that. Actually, the worship of Lord Nishingadev was introduced. Prabhupada taught us that we could put the picture of Lord Nishingadev on the altar. What happened was Prabhupada was very ill at one point, had some heart problems, some health with health issues. So we all asked Prabhupada, "What can, what can we do for your protection?" So at that time. Prabhupada taught, he said, you there's, take a picture of Lord Nishringadev and place it on the altar. And after RT, every day, after you offer the RT, then you can sing the Nishringa Stotra, right? we, which is from Jayadeva Goswami's Gita. Uh, it's the, the Das Avatar Stotra, which is the beginning of the Gita Govinda. So in the Das Avadar Stotra, we sing the, the verse to Lord Nishringadev. And this is a very nice prayer. This is very pleasing to Lord Nishringadev. You can simply follow in the footsteps of these great devotees. You're not sure how to pray yourself? Follow their prayers. Yes? Yes, Prabhu?
so we are also going to hell or like we will not get bhakti because like we are also uh, have some material desires and we are like attached to body also like we are attached to the body we have material desires so are we all going to hell <laughs> well i hope not yeah we need the mercy right so take the mercy because we're getting a lot of mercy from the Krishna consciousness movement. Who are going to hell? The Haranyakashipu people, the followers of Haranyakashipu, they're going to hell. But the devotees, no, they're never going to hell. They're, they're going back to Godhead. They're following Krishna, Lord Nishringadev. We're following Lord Chaitanya and Prabhupada. Prabhupada had a, no, what's it, was it Prabhupada, he had a, no, a devotee had a dr dream, or Prabhupada had a dream, I can't remember now, but people were drinking, people were drinking, but then the drunkards were starting to chant Hare Krishna, and, and Prabhupada, said, Prabhupada said, yes, this is very nice, the drunkards are all starting to chant Hare Krishna, becoming devotees, so then a devotee said to Prabhupada, Prabhupada, were any devotees becoming drunkards? <laughs> and Prabhupada said, no, impossible. Devotees, their names are already in the book. They're going back to Godhead. Right? Because they're devotees, their spiritual life has begun. Okay, we still have some material desires, we're still in bodily concept of life. We have attachments, but we know about it. And we're trying, we're working on it. Just like if you're, if you're dirty, but if you're in the shower and you're taking bath, we cannot criticize you, right? Because you're in the shower. In time, you'll get clean. Now, we've come to Krishna consciousness. We're chanting, we're taking prasadam, we're hearing the kata. Gradually, these material desires are diminishing less and less. We don't notice it, but it's happening every day, every moment. Every time you chant Hare Krishna and you take part in the Krishna conscious activities, your material attachments are diminishing less and less. You're getting more and more taste for Krishna. And this way your life is successful. Yes. Yes, Prabhu has a Hare Krishna Maharaj Danvat Pranam for a very inspiring class. You started your class by saying that education is very important. Uh, can you give us some tips as a devotee parent? We are staying where there are no gurukuls. How to raise our children in a Krishna conscious environment? Oh, that's really a, a difficult question. How to raise our children in a Krishna conscious environment when there's no Guru Kulas? Well, everything depends on the parents in that situation. Parents are also Guru. So you have to be the perfect example for your children. They have to see that you also chant, that you also get up early and you worship Krishna and you study the scriptures. So that example is very, very important for the children. And they have to see that from birth, from the beginning of their life, they have to be trained like that. Without that training from the beginning of life, then it's a little difficult. It's a little difficult to change. Just like sometimes you get the parents, you know, a little later in life, they take to Krishna consciousness and they want to be vegetarian. And then the child said, I want meat. Mommy, I want meat. What, it's a difficult situation. Sometimes it's like that. The children want They've been brought up eating meat. They were not brought up to be vegetarian. The parents want to change, the child 
doesn't want to change. Very difficult situation. What are you going to do? Uh, well, it's your, you, you brought the child up to eat meat. It's your fault. It's nobody else's fault. What we bring the children up, how they are, we're, the, we're responsible. We have to take the, the credit or <laughs> the blame. So, yes, bringing up children is very difficult. It really is not an easy task. We know that. But if you're yourself, if you are patient and tolerant and determined, then gradually you can win it over, win them over. Just like if you cook nice food, the child will want to eat. If you can cook properly, if you can cook nice, tasty, vegetarian dishes, then you can lure, lure your child away from meat. Prabhupada went to the West. At that time, nobody was a vegetarian, hardly. But Prabhupada cooked so nicely, everyone was happy to eat Prabhupada's cooking. The food Prabhupada cooked was so tasty and so satisfying. Everybody, nobody ever said, I want to eat meat. It didn't happen. People were happy because Prabhupada knew how to cook. He could cook wonderfully. And he would cook kachoris, samosas, gulab jamuns, halava, everything, you know, he would make wonderful prasadam and devotees would be in ecstasy and the kirtan also nice kirtan you know of course if you if your children have an interest then it's very good encourage them you try to organize kirtan and do kirtan and the children will want to join in the kirtan they'll want to learn if they can learn if they have an interest to learn the drum or play the play cartels or so, then that's very good. You want to try to encourage them, get a teacher for them that they can learn. And then also you have to try to have some nice Krishna conscious entertainment. You know, education should be, it should be fun. You have to make it interesting. Just like we have dramas, Krishna, you know, today usually there'd be the drama of Lord Nishingadev. I'm sure many centers, they'll have the drama of Lord Nishingadev. So like that, you have, to, you have to be a little inspired and think how to make this attractive to your children, that they want to become devotees. We cannot force, but you have to attract them. This is the idea. So some, some people, you know, they're, they're very good at it. They, they actually, you know, they have a, na a natural ability to teach and to show a nice, make a nice program. So if from the beginning of your life, if from the beginning the children are brought up like that, then it's much easier. Later, beginning, it's more difficult, harder. But we wish you good luck. It's certainly required. We do want our children to become devotees. If our, ch if our children don't become devotees, in the future, there may be no devotees. If your children are not going to be brought up to be devotees, who are going to be the devotees? Don't think that we can keep on converting people to Krishna consciousness. It's not usually like that. But people come, they come to a, 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 a faith, a, a path of religion, and they will, they will stay in that path. If you look at the, the other Vaishnava Sampradayas, you know, they're in that line. The whole family, generations, they were all Sri Vaishnavas or they were mudvas, 
like that. We want, once people come to Krishna consciousness, that they will stay in Krishna consciousness. And their family will also be in Krishna consciousness. It's very important. Yes, Prabhu? Hare Krishna. Um, <clears throat> Srila Prabhupada, in one of the purports in the seventh canto, describes how Prahlad Maharaj's preaching was indirectly effective. And it seems by in an innocent way that he was preaching to a faithless person. Can you hold the mic? He was preaching to a, it seemed like Prahlad was preaching to a faithless person, uh, inflaming the fury of his father. So we're told not to preach to the faithless. Can you what? We're told not to preach to the faithless. Preach to the faithless? Well, is Prahlad preaching to the faithless? What we don't pre there's certain things we don't preach to the faithless. We don't preach the intimate glories of the holy name. Right? So, but we do have to awaken faith in the faithless. So Prahlad's preaching was with that intention, to awaken faith in his faithless father. So we do need to preach to people, but we don't preach the intimate glories of the holy name. We don't preach to them Brasalila. We don't tell them that, oh, by chanting Hare Krishna you can counteract all your sins. You know, can go on doing sins and chant Hare Krishna. They'll think like that. You know, you have to be careful what we preach. We preach what Prahlad is preaching, you're not the body. Prahlad is preaching about aham and mamiti, the bodily conception of life and the danger of attachment to material sense gratification. Prahlad is preaching about a need to see equality, to see everyone equally and not to discriminate against people thinking friend, enemy, I like him, I don't like that. This is all, that's the business of the mind. So we. Prahlad was preaching what, was, what, he, what his father needed to hear. He didn't preach the intimate, the, the, the very confidential topics. So. We don't preach the confidential things to non-devotees. We have to awaken faith. We have to tell people, you're not the body, you're serving your senses. Your uncontrolled senses are giving you so much trouble. You have to control your mind, you have to control your senses. And so we can preach like that, gradually awaken faith. But we don't preach the confidential topics to faithless persons. And that's why Krishna's pastimes are in the tenth canto. They come in the tenth canto. When you've gone through the first nine, then you can come to the tenth canto. And you, you're ready to hear about Lord Krishna. First you have to hear about creation. How does Krishna create the material world? You have to hear Shristi Tattva, the topics of creation. Mahavishnu, Garbhodakshayi Vishnu, Shirudakshayi Vishnu. We have to hear these things. The preliminary knowledge. You have to understand how the Lord has inconceivable energies. Achintya Shakti. If we don't accept that Krishna has Achintya Shakti, inconceivable energies, then we will never understand the pastimes of Krishna. And this, people don't. Ordinary people don't understand the pastimes of Krishna because they never studied Srimad Bhagavatam from the beginning and they never studied Bhagavad Gita. They just simply heard Rasa Lila. So finished, ruined. They're ruined. Very difficult to re-educate them. So very important education. We try to educate people in Krishna consciousness. 
We have many seminars. We have the ISKCON Disciple Course. We have Bhakti Shastri, Bhakti Bhai Bhav, Bhakti Vedanta. In the future, there will be Bhakti Sarvabhoma. All of these things. More and more seminars, more and more opportunity for education. Here in Mayapur, we have the NDP, New Devotee Program. Right? The NDP, many devotees, they go there. They're greatly benefited by taking part in the new devotee program. They get training. When I joined the Krishna Consciousness Movement, we were out on Harinam the first day. Here's a book bag, Prabhu. Go out the door, go out there in the street, see how many books you can sell. You know, that was the program. We were trained on the street. Nowadays we try to train devotees a little better. How to, what, what are you going to say to people when you meet them on the street? How are you going to deal with people? You know, education, training, very important. We didn't really have the facility or, or the, the know-how how to do it in the beginning. But nowadays, much more organized, much more education. But still some people don't take advantage. They don't want education. Oh, I'll just chant Hare Krishna. Yeah, you cannot imitate Haridas Thakur. Haridas Thakur can just chant Hare Krishna. But we, we cannot be Haridas Thakur. We need education. We need to hear. We do need to study Prabhupada's books. All right, any other question? All right, maybe we will stop here then. Thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki Hare Krishna. Uh, His Holiness Bhakti Vignu Nasan Nasing Swami Maharaj Ki yeah. Thank you Maharaj for a wonderful and amazing and enlightening lecture on Nasing Katha.